pass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. EWTN. Live Truth. Live Catholic. in Birmingham, network is built on trust. The essence of evangelization is to tell everybody Jesus loves you. We are all called to be great saints. Don't miss the opportunity. before the show, <laughs> right, especially with our um, <coughs> people who uh, project me. I'm not sure what from yet, but <laughs> they <laughs> anyway, I, I try to stretch it out as much as possible and make them as miserable as possible so they gain merit. See? And if they can gain merit, then they'll have a bigger crown just because of me. See. I figured it out that way. I'm not too sure it works out that way sometimes. But anyway, you know, this is the feast of Our Lady's Assumption. And a lot of people don't understand that. They get it all mixed up with Our Lady's uh, miraculous, uh, Immaculate Conception, and it's different. And you say, well, why do you think that way? Oh, you're telling me, huh? Yeah, this will happen uh, quite frequently when somebody tells me it's moving. It's a mental monstrance. Reminds me of the host, Blessed Sacrament. Anyway, our lady's um, assumption is something we're all going to have, you know? Uh, you think of all the people who've been born from the from day one, millions and billions and trillions, probably, we're all going to rise. You know, your old bones can be moldy, turned to powder, and somebody turned them back into dirt and built a, a big building on top. How do you know what's <laughs> under the ground? You don't know. I know this woman bought some property. She didn't want it because she heard it was a burial ground. And I said to her, so what? She said, people may be buried there. I said, they're probably buried where you're walking. <laughs> Just like that little kid, you know, his mother said that we're all going to turn to dust. So he talked to her one morning at breakfast, and he said, Mom, Is that dust under my uh, uh, bed coming or gone? <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't know whose dust is under your bed. <laughs> That's the way it is, you see. But God's going to bring it all together. You won't have all those warts on your face. You won't be bald if you're bald now. 
Imagine yourself having a big head of hair. <laughs> Wouldn't that be worth going to heaven for? I mean, <laughs> oh. huh? Uh, you'll never be tired. I like, like that. I like that. I can't remember a day I wasn't tired. And there's nothing wrong with me. I just get tired. And you won't have a, you're going to look beautiful. You say, well, but see, a glorified body is beautiful. Do you ever notice somebody, you saw my baby picture. I don't know why they put my baby picture on top of the life book or whatever book it is. But anyway, I was 40 pounds at 18 months. Pretty heavy. Well, that was because my father got mad at my mother and pulled her hair for some reason, and she lost her milk, so I went on something called Dryco. And I've been fat ever since. <laughs> but I think fat is more to love. See? That's my reasoning. But you see, we're all made different. But at the resurrection, you look at your baby picture. Well, don't. <laughs> look at your picture like somebody sent me an old, old, uh, what do you call these books you get after you graduate high school? Yeah, yeah. And I looked at me there, and I look at me now, I don't look like the same person. See? If you saw somebody at 20 and you see them again at 80, you're not going to recognize them. They're all different. You may say, well, the eyes are different, but they're all different. There's a change see, in all of us. But you see Our Lady now, you say, well, why should she be so different? Well, because she was created by God. Uh, before time began, he had her in his mind to be the mother of his son, the eternal word. Now you can't even think for a half a second that the mother of God could be in the hands of Satan even for a half a second. See, that would defile the temple. I mean, that's common sense. You don't need anything else to really realize that God's temple had to be absolutely perfect for his sake, see? So if you say, well, I don't know why she, I don't believe in Immaculate Conception, well, you're being a little dum-dum because common sense tells you this was absolutely essential. We were all born with original sin. And we have consequences for original sin, even after baptism, you know. You're, you're, you manifest very young in life, jealousy, uh, anger, oversensitivity. Little kids get really very angry. And some kids, they don't care. So we're born with a lot of things that, you know, are not like Jesus, see? And so we have to overcome these things. But Our Lady was born absolutely created by God, conceived, and went her entire life, never, never committing one fault or imperfection. And so what happens? Well, she begins to benefit by the same graces we will have without all that. We're all going to rise one day. You say, well, how will I look? Well, if you're going to heaven, you look pretty good. If you're going to the other place, I don't think you want to know. You say, why? Because all the people down there are ugly, ugly, ugly. <laughs> you know, we don't think of common sense things about hell. We just think of the fire and who's going to go there and God isn't merciful. Yeah, God's merciful. All the people down there want to be. You say, well, I don't believe that. Yeah, you do. Look at the newspapers. Hmm. <laughs> You know, if you go to a grocery store, you gotta, you gotta have, you, I put blinders on because of all the books they put in front. They're terrible. 
boy, they look awful, these covers. You say, well, but that, see, that's not what God made us to be. Our Lady could never even commit one little sin. So what does she do? She benefits by all the graces. We will benefit by the blood of Jesus, by redemption. We're all going to rise, for better or worse. If you want to look beautiful, you better concentrate on heaven. And if you want to look like the ugliest creature on God's earth, you got to go. You're going down there. You're going to rise that way. So why do you know that? Common sense tells you that. Besides faith, what you reap, you sow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're not going to change all the way up from there to hell, up to here, to through the through the ground and through the fire and and change. You're not going to change. It's like the little angel who lost his his uh, the one he was supposed to guard and guide and protect and. They went to hell. It was a woman. I mean, don't feel bad about it. Men go to hell too. <laughs> that didn't sound right, did it? <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> I gotta watch it. Anyway, so uh, the little angel really pleaded with God. He said, so the Lord said to him, did give me one thing she did that was good and charitable. She said she gave an onion to somebody. Oh, one onion. She said, yeah. He said, okay, take that onion and put it down into hell. If she can grab it, you can pull her up. That sounded good. That angel was so happy. So he goes on there, hey, I'm here. <laughs> this is not in the joke. I'm just adding it. <laughs> I have 40 minutes, I might as well make it right. <laughs> so he said, if you hang on, I can bring you up to heaven. So she's hanging on, and all of a sudden, there's two or three hanging on her feet. And she shakes them off. She said, this is my onion. <laughs> <laughs> they all went down. Because, see, selfishness was still there still there. None of this could be in Our Lady, see, the Mother of God. And the little child Jesus had to be comfortable with Our Lady, in Our Lady. And after he was born, he had to have that holiness and that common sense. That's why Joseph was also holy. And you can't deprive our Lord of that because Everybody in heaven is holy. Now, you may go to purgatory a little bit, but they're all holy in heaven. See, if we're not, we're not going to get there until we are. So Our Lady had to have all these prerogatives. Her, and, and Gabriel said that. Because of original sin, which was not taken away until Jesus gave us baptism, until... Until that time, everybody was born with original sin and everybody had the consequences of original sin. But what does the angel say to Our Lady? He said, Hail, full of grace. Wow, full of God. Well, she wouldn't be full of God if she had the slightest imperfection. See? She'd have to uh, uh, repent. She'd have to be forgiven. You see, that can't be. It just cannot be. And so Our Lady, you know, we admire Father Pio. You know, he's one of my new favorite saints. And um, we admire him. He suffered terrible. He was beat up every night by the devil. God, ooh, I don't think I could take that. And God doesn't give me that, see. But, you see, we admire him because, I don't know, I bumped my toe the other day on a concrete pillar. I've been hippity-hopping for five days. 
Well, I just can't imagine him shuffling on, on feet that had holes this big. See, that takes a lot of something. But see, he did that in reparation for poor sinners. So you, you have wonderful holy people in the world. Mother Therese was, you know, I hope they beatify her soon. You have a lot of examples, but we're all sinners. I am, you am, they were, everybody. See, that could not be but Thy Lady. Because she was so pure and so holy, there was no reason for her to, to rot away like we're going to. You know? But we know it's going to happen, you know. We're going to slowly dissolve and disappear. And, and then, you see, but it couldn't happen to Our Lady. It just couldn't happen to her. In a million years, it couldn't happen. See, all of this is a part of the curse that Adam and Eve got. Poor Adam, I bet he just went in there and blew a seed in the ground, and it started growing. All of a sudden, he had a tree and all kind of fruit on it. That was easy. Boy, that was great. I like to do that. Then he'd plant something else. It had to be fun. And then the Lord would look at Adam and say, now, what do you want to call that? And he'd say, asparagus. He said, oh. <laughs> Not a bad name. <laughs> OK, from now until the end of time, it shall be asparagus. That would be fun. See? And maybe he found an animal, and the animal was big, stomping through the ground, and the ground was shaking. And Adam said, oh, well, what do we name him? She said, well, well, you name him. It's OK. He's an elephant. Mm -hmm. Oh, why? Well, he's big. OK, elephant. Then all of a sudden, here comes this strange-looking creature with the longest neck he ever saw. He said, what are you going to call him? He said, I don't know. I never saw such a long neck. And the father might have said, well, we got carried away when we created him. <laughs> The eternal word picked him up by the neck and just kept stretching. <laughs> oh, well, what do we call him? How about giraffe? There's a good name, giraffe. That would have been fun. He would have never sweat. Can you imagine getting up in the morning? And you're not full of sweat. I think sweat is one of the worst curses of the original sin. Don't you think so? Huh? Sweat, oh, it sticks on you, and then it gets sticky, and, and then you're going around like this, and, and you look like you got ants all over your back. And, and then you go in air conditioning, and that sweat takes revenge because it starts getting ice cold. <laughs> and it, it drips down your back, drop at a time, ice cold sweat. Well, I, I think that's obnoxious. I mean, yeah. of all the things God could have punished us with, he chose sweat. <laughs> and you look terrible. I mean, dripping. Some people sweat a lot. You know, they're just dripping all the time. And you shake hands and they're dripping. And <laughs> they give you a smooch and your face is all wet. It's just. I mean, I think that that should have been mentioned in the book of Genesis. <laughs> I think it was. Wasn't it? By the sweat of your brow. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> By the sweat of your brow, you're going to till this ground. And you know what's going to come up, buddy? Weeds. <laughs> Poor Adam didn't know anything about weeds. He never saw a weed in his life. <sighs> Can you imagine disobeying God? I've always said it wasn't the apple in the tree, it was the pear on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
You didn't get it. <laughs> you got it? Y'all got it? Pear, P-A-R, pear, okay. Oh well, you didn't get it either. <laughs> You're gonna be a seminarian one day. <laughs> we gotta examine our seminarians. You know? But see, all of that was so changed, you see? No sin, no feelings of sin. I, I, you know, being Italian, I... <sighs> Can you imagine never feeling angry? Wouldn't that be wonderful? <gasps> oh, Can you imagine not having enough self-control that you could call you, you just can't help saying to somebody, why are you so stupid? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if you thought it but didn't say it, see? Wouldn't it be nice if you looked at everybody and loved them? See, that's what Jesus wants us to do. And that's what Adam and Eve did. You say, well, they didn't have anybody but each other. Oh, that was enough, apparently. <laughs> I mean, they got us into all this trouble, see? But when the Lord cursed them, pretty tough. You know, I felt sorry for Adam and Eve when they first saw death, you know? They had never seen death because everything was always thriving, everything was beautiful. The weather was perfect, perfect. They never felt heat or cold. Oh, you can't imagine paradise. And then it changed. All of a sudden, one morning they get up and they're cold. I don't think those leaves were any good. <laughs> All you people in the tropics, you go get a leaf one day, you're not going to get warm. I mean, they had to figure this thing out. You know, they were always warm and comfortable. All of a sudden, it's gone. It's like Adam saying to Eve, I don't feel too good. How do you feel? I don't know. I'm shaking. Why? I don't know why. Why are you asking me why? It's your fault. <laughs> My Bible's a little different. <laughs> but you'd have to know this is a reality. This is really what they had to go through. A cold wind. They never felt a cold wind. They were never thirsty. And if they were hungry, they just went and picked something off a tree. And now they had to cook it. Cook. What do we do with this thing? I don't know. We used to eat it, yeah, but it tastes good then. It tastes terrible now. Maybe the father came down and had pity on him and said that you have to make a fire and then you cook it. Oh, where I get the fire? Got to make it. Oh, how? Oh, come on, I'll show you. Oh, well, he had to get two pieces of stone, and he goes, How long is it going to take? A long time. A spark. Ah, a spark. Well, nothing happened. It's going to. Go ahead. Suddenly, it starts a fire. Can you imagine all of that? I want you to imagine what we lost, see? Then, I think the greatest thing is here comes a lion, and oh, he loved those lions. They would come up and he'd pet them. He'd snuggle up to his ear. This time, all of a sudden, he's got fear. He never had fear. Never had fear. He says, Eve, stay in the back. Why? There's Buster there. I don't care what his name is. Stay in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Is 
they understand. <laughs> See, they never felt fear. These, all these animals were friendly, friendly animals. And, and, and here comes Adam. He's going to be the brave one. And he goes up there, and, and all of a sudden, this lion roars. Oh, he never heard a roar before. He ran. And the, 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 the lion comes back, and he's stomping one foot, and he's going after him. All of this is new to Adam, absolutely new. And we still got the same stuff, you see. See, Our Lady never had that, never. And some of the saints had great gifts. The Holy Father Francis chained the wolf. Saint, uh, Saint Anthony brought no one who would listen to the gospel. So he brought all the fish out of the ocean and they stood in rows with the littlest fish in the front and all the big whales way in the back. And they all bowed their head while Francis prayed and told them about God. Scared, you know what, out of those people. They really came and listened. And see, those are little sparklings of of gifts from God that holy people have been given just to remind us of what we lost and what these people possess again. Now, I know Our Lady felt cold and hungry because she wanted to imitate her son. <coughs> but the consequences of original sin were not there. She, she never felt like we do. And Our Lady had to be awesome because she always said yes to God. That's a, a secret of holiness. Oh, you don't have to be bright. You don't have to be a genius. You don't have to build buildings. You don't have to do any of those things. You have to do God's will with love and sacrifice. Sacrifice. That's the way it is now. And then one day, we'll die, all of us, but then the day will come at the end of the world when God will breathe and say, rise, rise. Oh, wow. And you say, well, that ever happened before? Yeah, at the, at the crucifixion. What does it say? It says a couple of things that I find very interesting. Number one, there was a terrible earthquake. Terrible earthquake. Nature, God's creature, nature, revolted against the reality that their creator was crucified by man. It revolted. It got dark at noon. And there was lightning. And the earth quaked. And the dead rose. They rose and walked around. So nature rebelled. I'm wondering. I'm wondering if it's not happening today. I'm wondering because the world is so full of the most terrible sins. Killing babies while they're being born. To get their brains out to help somebody out. That don't make sense the worst kind of murder. Killing babies in the womb, they have no way of defending themselves. No way. No way. I'm wondering if the fires we have, the floods, even in Europe they're having terrible fires. I'm wondering if nature is not beginning to rebel rebel over the sin that lies upon it. You say, well, see, there had to be a Mary. There had to be. There had to be a Jesus, the eternal word. Only God could stand in our place to get the Father's mercy and forgiveness. Only God. An ant cannot make up to me for biting me. He's an ant. I can blow him away. What an ant. 
Well, they were about that much before God. He's God Almighty. He's creator. He always was. There was never a time when he was not. Now, that would blow your mind. And we offend him. Oh, come on. We offend God, and we're not afraid of it. We think, oh, he understands. No, he doesn't understand sin. No more than a father who loves his son understands why that son is not obedient. Because he doesn't love. See, it all comes down to love. And you only do God's will because you love. See, Our Lady could never do that. She always loved God, always, and always did his will. Mm. With perfect union, there had to be somebody like her. And only from her, only from this holy, perfect woman could the eternal word come. There was no other way. No other way. And we should thank God that he created such a woman. And he told Adam and Eve, and he told that little four-legged. I never understood why our Lord said, on your belly you're going to crawl. He must have had legs. He must have had something. He's got crawling on his belly. But he promised the woman, oh, wow, the woman will crush your head. Ooh, wonderful. And that woman had to be absolutely, totally, always holy. And that's why we celebrate the <coughs> Assumption of Our Lady today. Tradition tells us that <coughs> St. Uh, Thomas was always late. We always have somebody like that in our family. They're always late. <laughs> I hope your son is not going to be late for his wedding. You see. <laughs> but there's always somebody in a family we know that, you know, we say, we're going to start at 8 o'clock. They're not going to be there. You know it. All you men that have finicky wives, you know they're never going to be on time. They put the makeup on, then they don't like it, then they take it off, then they put it on again, and you're out there waiting, 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 waiting. It, that's life. You can't change it. Now, what's that got to do with what I was going to tell you? <laughs> I really don't know. <laughs> Where was I? Does anybody know? Huh? A what? Oh, well, I forgot. <laughs> Today they would say it wasn't relevant. <laughs> Isn't that what they say today? It wasn't relevant. That's always a good word. Gets you out of a lot of trouble. <laughs> but anyway, I promised at the beginning of this program that I, somebody had said to me not too long ago, how did you ever become a nun? Well, that's a long story. But I can tell you about the day I became a nun, and that's today, 56 years ago. That's a long, 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 long time. <laughs> well, you know, I wanted to be a nun about two years before I became one, but I had to wait until I was 21 because my mother just wouldn't let me go. I mean, she just had a fit. And my uncles and aunts thought I was nuts. Um, and I was all she had, really, all those years. And she just, you know, didn't want to lose me. And so I wrote her a letter, and uh, making it short, but I wrote her a letter. And I had my boss, I worked for Chimkin Roller Bearing Company, and I had my boss mail it. And he gave me fare um, to get a, a, a bus and go to Cleveland with it. And I wrote to my mother, and my grandmother knew, but she would never say anything. 
and the letter that I wrote to my mother explaining why I had to go. Why? I told her that I, I didn't feel I would live long if I didn't go. I told her I loved her, but I had to do God's will. That there was really nothing in life for me except the Lord, and I had to go. And I hoped she would understand. Well, uh, she got the letter at the same time I would be coming home. And they said you could hear her across the street. And, uh, and my uncles and my aunts, they never thought I would do that. When I got to Cleveland, the St. Paul Shrine where the monastery was, and when the abbess found out I ran away from home, she didn't want to take me in. She was afraid, you know. And um, so there was an external sister, Sister Mary Magdalene. And uh, she, when she started talking in German to Reverend Mother, I knew I was in good shape. <laughs> I don't know why I knew, but she seemed to make Reverend Mother understand. And so Reverend Mother said, okay, we'll take you in. Well, they told me to stand in front of this four-foot door. It was big. It was very dark on the outside. They had little, oh, seven and a half watt bulbs. You really had to get adjusted to, to see. And I remember when that door opened, it was awesome with a long hallway. And there were uh, 42 nuns in that monastery at the time. And I had to kneel at this uh, door and Reverend Mother uh, blessed me and asked me what I wanted, and I said I wanted to dedicate my life to God in the Blessed Sacrament. And all of them had their veils down. It, it was, was kind of scary, you know, because I didn't like nuns in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there I was trying to become one, see, and, and I... I was scared because I thought, wow. And then as we, we got into the chapel, they put a little cap on me and, and um, they all put their veils up. So that, that was a relief. So. And it was an awesome day. I didn't know what my mother was doing. I, didn't, I know she'd be crying. I know all my relatives would not understand. I know that, you know, but I had a very saintly abbess, and um, she called my mother, and she told her I was fine, and she had my mother come. This was August 15th, and I didn't see anybody until November. And one day, um, the uh, vicar called me, and she said, your uncle's here. And I said, my uncle? She said, yes. Would you like to see him? I said, oh, yeah. And that day, I got the little little black veil. I mean, it came gradually. It isn't like today. You know, you get it all at one time. But it came gradually, and so I was very happy, you know. And so there's Uncle Nick. And uh, the grill is open, and that was something that got to him, see. So he started crying. I mean, I never saw Uncle Nick cry. He's one of these strong men that never cries, but he was crying. And so I just sat there, and he sat there, and I said, hi, Uncle Nick, and he couldn't answer. <laughs> and uh, I said, how are you? He couldn't answer. Uh, he stopped crying, then he'd look at me, and he'd start all over again. <laughs> and so finally he got out, are you happy? And I said, yes, I am very happy. And I said, how's my mother? She said, well, pretty bad. But he wouldn't say anything else. He sat there one hour crying. And I tried to make conversation, but he tried to answer, but he couldn't. So finally he gets up, he's still crying, and he says goodbye, and that was that. 
So it was a, a difficult time for them, very difficult. But my abbess was very kindly, very, very strong woman, but kind, very kind woman. And she finally got my mother to come and visit. And in those days, you could only visit a couple hours. But she was happy. She, was, she finally got over it. But you know, the wonderful thing was that my entire family went back to church. And nobody went to Mass except Christmas Eve and Easter. I, think this, I don't think it's typical, but it was typical of my family. And they all went to get confession. They all went back to the sacraments. Um, it was an awesome day. It was an awesome time. In those days, you had to be, you were a postulant six months. Well, I was a postulant 15 months. They were forever sending me home because I had two grapefruit on my knee. You know, there was a, what do you call them, housemaid knee or something, from kneeling, I guess. But they were, they were like this. I mean, really big. And uh, the infirmarian would say to me, you gotta kneel or they're gonna send you home. I said, well, I can't kneel. I said, well, you better or they're gonna send you home. I said, okay, so I would kneel on these big grapefruits, you know. I'd switch knees all the time. So it was 15 months before they decided they were gonna keep me. I never found out whether they regretted that little thing or not. <laughs> <laughs> In either case, uh, that was it. And now I just remembered what I was gonna talk about and <laughs> that St. <Saint> Thomas, <laughs> right? Ah. St. Thomas, according to tradition, was always late, always late. And so when he, all the apostles heard a lady had died, they all came, all went where she was, except Thomas. And so when he came, they, they opened up the whatever it was, and she was gone. She wasn't there. And so, even with that, though, the proof of her assumption is in a, in a divine office book. And from the very beginning of Christianity, it was always believed that she was assumed into him. It just makes sense, just makes sense. So now we've talked about everything and and I've enjoyed it. We only got 19 minutes left, and, and so I'm going to have some calls. Hello? Hello. Hi, where are you from? I'm from Boynton Beach, Florida, Mother. Uh, where, what's your question? My question is, um, I've been a Catholic all my life, not a practicing one until about um, close to 40 years ago when I got married. Mm -hmm. um, I've had this disease for the past 40 years, uh, it's called Raynaud's scleroderma, where it affects all the parts of your body. I had a very loving husband who would stand behind me whenever I'd have these illnesses. But unfortunately, just last December, uh, in September, I lost him. And he was, well, all his life he wasn't sick, and in two months he was gone. He was, he died right, just right beside me. And um, while he was, while he died, I, in the meantime, I was sick, and uh, all of a sudden, after he died, I, I buried him with military honors and everything because he was in the service. I started having worse problems, so I had four surgeries after that, and I ended up with part of my right leg amputated, and I'm alone. And I talked to a couple of my friends, and uh, they said that I was suffering uh, for other people, and I was suffering for my own sins. and being a lector of my church for over 30 years, I couldn't believe that. But then I started having these feelings of probably I am suffering for all my sins. And I'm just wondering that a loving God like Jesus, would he, uh, you know, let us go through this, uh, sister? Well, <laughs> I, I, I question that you're just suffering for your sins, you know. 
when all suffering is an act of mercy of God. We don't look at suffering right. If it wasn't so suffering in all our lives, the suffering of putting up with ourselves, our own dispositions, our own weaknesses, the suffering that comes to us from others, the suffering that comes to us from our own body as it weakens as we get older and older. The suffering that comes every day in every possible way is a part of God's mercy to us. God's mercy because he wants to purify us. He, he's not punishing you for your sins. He's, he's allowing you to suffer for your own sake and for the sake of others. See, to St. Paul said, this is a wicked generation and your lives should redeem it. Well, we all know there's only one redeemer. We all know that Jesus redeemed us already. What did he mean? It means we add our pain, our sufferings, our frustrations, our disappointments, our heartaches to the, to the pain of Jesus. And that redeems all mankind. So you, you can't say God's looking at you and say, oh, boy, you're a big sitter. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you. No, 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 no. That's what he does. If I suffer anything, it's, it's, a, it's a, an act of God's mercy for us, an act of God's love for me. See? I can't go to heaven being me. I got to go to heaven being like Jesus. See, everything we do has to be for Jesus. And all your pains and sufferings, see, your loneliness now, see, um, is all a part of God's mercy. Look at it that way. God has mercy on all of us, see. And these are opportunities to love him, to be like him. We have to change. You know, we have, Jesus himself emptied himself. See, we have to empty ourselves and not be like ourselves. You know? Don't let these consequences of original sin take hold of us. And today, you know, everybody's supposed to act just like the way they want to act. Well, we can't do that because we become unjust, unfair. There's a lot of that around, you know that. So you look upon your pain and suffering as a purification from God for all of us, for yourself, for mankind, for the church. But it's, it's, it's molding you into the image of Jesus. See, when the Father looks at you, he sees his son Jesus. And he does that with all of us, see. He's not pointing a finger at you. Take it as a gift from God, a loving gift that's going to mold you into his image. See, that's what we need. We have another call. Hello? Yes, thank you, Mother, for taking my call. And I wanted to ask, which Marian apparition is your favorite and why? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I have great faith in, in Bernadette Subiru. I have great faith in the children of Fatima. All of Our Lady's prophecies at Fatima have come true except uh, the last one, and that is that her Immaculate Heart will triumph. We need her to triumph these days. Things are out of hand. It's like a running runaway horse. It's just gone out of hand, and you know it, and I know it. And you may want to hide it, but it's there. We're always saying, well, we have another election coming. <laughs> you think that's going to solve it? No. Man cannot solve his own problems. Only God can. And since everything is so worldwide, lack of faith, hope, violence, murder, abortion, oh, you, you can't even, every day you think you've heard the worst and something else happens, you know, you just, it's getting a lot, getting to be a lot for all of us. And only God, if you read the Old Testament, he, he fixed up the people real fast. He put up with them. And all of a sudden, boom, that was the end of that. We start over. What's going to happen? I don't know. 
My favorite apparition is any apparition that's true. And that's the problem, you see. The problem is you can't prove a apparition until what is predicted happens. Then you know it's true. But as long as it doesn't say anything heretical or false, you can believe it. For example, if Our Lady says to 25 people in wherever, say the rosary, you can believe that. Then say the rosary. You should be doing it anyway. You don't need a confirmation that that's Our Lady. If she's saying do penance, try that. It won't hurt you. I never saw anybody die from penance. <laughs> I've seen them die from drinking too much, from too much uh, everything, too much drink, too much uh, uh, food, uh, too much sex, too much everything, too much of everything. Just grinds you down to nothing. See, so uh, as long as whatever or whoever. Now, when they start giving days and dates. Uh, Nobody knows what's going to happen except God, and he's not telling anybody. Now, I'd be ready, though. See, to me, prudence and common sense say the Lord should be coming the way we're acting. The Lord may come, and he may just shake this world good and hard. Well, what am I going to do? I'm going to be ready. I want to go to confession every week. Why? I don't want to answer for anything except one week. <laughs> Forget this 20-year business, I mean. I haven't been to confession for 20 years. You better shape up, buddy because you're not going to have time to tell all those things. <laughs> if this world is going to shake, and it might, who knows? Um, you think you're going to have to, oh, it's a 1920, I did this, a 1925, I did, hey, forget it, you're going to be shaking so hard. You're not going to do anything but shake. <laughs> uh, if that should happen, I know, tell you, mother's giving predictions, I'm not. <laughs> But all I'm saying is, the best thing to do when you're not sure what's going to happen, if it happens, is be ready all the time. Some of you could go to confession every day. You'd be in better shape than you are now. So what's wrong with that? You're scrupulous. Hey, I'll go where scrupulous. I don't care. At least I won't have that much to answer. Because when you go to confession and you've confessed your sins with a sincere heart and you don't intend to do that again, that's important, God forgets. Why you want to carry a load you don't need to carry? He forgets it. You know, one of, uh, one of uh, Margaret Mary, St. Margaret Mary's confessors, Ask her, trying to prove that she was really having visions of our Lord. And he said, go ask the Lord next time you see him, what was my last mortal sin? So she did. She said, my confessor doesn't believe me. He wants you to tell me his last mortal sin. And the Lord said, I don't remember. <laughs> he confessed it. So if you don't remember one thing I said tonight, Don't carry a load more than a week old because you don't know. You don't know if you cross the street somebody, a dear, dear friend of one of our vice presidents was walking down the sidewalk in Washington, D.C. A man lost control of his car, came on the sidewalk and killed him. He didn't know. He had no idea when he stepped out of that building. He was near judgment. That we don't know. So I, uh, I don't know. Some of you like to carry loads. I don't know. But some of you that haven't been to confession in years, oh, you better run as fast as you can. <laughs> I'd pound on that door if I were you. You say, oh, but, but, but Mother Angelica said we're all going to pot. I didn't say that. <laughs> 
I never said that. I said, don't carry a load more than a week old, or you may go to the hot pot. <laughs> Why you want to do that? See, it's common sense, common sense. Now, if you have faith, wonderful, because faith will tell you you cannot appear before God in the state your soul is at this moment. You cannot. You can't mock God. You can't. He's not a, an old daddy up there, you know. He's God Almighty, awesome, holy, compassionate, just, and merciful. But a lot of his justice is also his mercy, and his mercy is a lot of it is his justice, see. So don't try to figure it out. It's too complicated. I just go to confession, and don't leave anything out. See? Too bad we don't have a few Padre Pios around. <laughs> this one woman in one of the books I'm reading went to confession four times to him, and he made her call this, uh, uh, walk up this high mountain as a penance. And four times she didn't confess one sin. And finally, he said to her, Close your eyes. There are two women that did this. And he said, What do you see? And he, she said, I see a pope in white kneeling, praying. And he said, yes, that was to be the son you aborted. Oh, another one came to him and didn't say it either. And he wouldn't forgive her. And he said to her, close your eyes. And she did. And she said, what do you see? She said, I see a cardinal kneeling at a prey to and she, he said, yes, that was to be your son. Well, when you go to confession, don't leave anything out because God knows. And we all need to be clean inside. You take a bath every day or you know what would happen. <laughs> Big B.O. <laughs> Bye now, I got to go. <laughs> to order this episode of Mother Angelica Live Classics from the EWTN Religious Catalog web store, log on to EWTNRC.com 24 hours a day, 7 days a week or call 1-800-854-6316. You are the very devil, Robespierre. On part two of Saints vs. Scoundrels, the truth of the French Revolution is laid bare when Saint Joan of Arc faces down French revolutionary Maximilien Robespierre. You kill the king of France, and now you kill the holy faith of the king of heaven. You are a destroyer of religion. I am its defender. It is I, Robespierre, the incorruptible that defends belief in the supreme being. Blood! Blood! I see blood! A river of blood! Like the sharpest blade, truth separates light from lies. <laughs> Part 2 of Saints vs. Scoundrels on the Global Catholic Network, EWTN. Next time on EWTN Live, join Monsignor James Murphy as he revisits the events of the Cristero War and its effect on Mexico and her people on the next EWTN Live. EWTN Radio, spreading the truth of the gospel to big cities and small towns like yours through network affiliates like 88.5 WSFI Radio, Antioch, Illinois. Thanks for sharing in the mission of EWTN Global Catholic Radio. During these trying times, it's easy to feel a bit shaken. Your EWTN family is here for you. We've created a place to help make sense of things, as well as provide encouragement and hope. It's a place where you can watch Mass every day, get prayers that will comfort you, adore the real presence of our Lord,